A massive thank you to my patrons who support me through Patreon and who have brought this episode of Shadowversity to you. If you would like to support Shadowversity and help me make these videos to the best level that I can, even a $1 donation per video is a tremendous help. There is a link to my Patreon page in the description below, and thank you for watching. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Mott and Bailey castles. Now, if you don't know what a Mott and Bailey castle is, this is one of the first types of castles that actually existed, okay? That came about. I will say that it's clear other castles existed in this period that were not of this classic Mott and Bailey design. You could have had just a castle that was just uh, a Bailey with a type of keep or a Mott. Now, if you're wondering what Mott is, so a Mott is a large earthwork, okay? So that's the Mott or Moat, and it's the root word of Moat because there's a ditch on the right on the outside as well. But anyway, that is the Mott and it would have a fortified tower atop of it, the keep. And then adjacent to it, it would have a secured section called the bailey. Now, bailey is a word that essentially means the internal courtyard of a castle, and that word carried on to castles that weren't of the Mott and Bailey design, and uh, the internal courtyard, yeah, it's the bailey. But going back, the bailey was actually separate to the main keep. And this design eventually went out of favour. It stopped being used, okay? Even when castles started to be made out of stone, and just to let you know, some castles were made out of stone even as early as uh, after, shortly after the Norman Conquest. William the Conqueror started to make some stone castles after his invasion. So, all right, stone did exist back then, but castles were mostly made out of wood in this modern Bailey design. And having said that, Castles were still made out of wood all the way through the main medieval period and even towards the end. I have a whole video on what they might have looked like, so it's a good watch. But yes, as the medieval period continues to move forward, Mott and Bailey design starts to disappear. We don't really see uh, signs of it anywhere. So why? Why would the Mott and Bailey design go out of favour? And that I personally feel is because some of the inherent weaknesses of the design, which is the purpose of this video, the problems with Mott and Bailey castles. What are the problems? Because there are some really good parts about the Mott and Bailey castle, like for instance, the Mott and the Keeper above it, okay? Attacking uphill at such a steep incline is really Really, really difficult. It means you can't get there quickly, it's hard to put down ladders to get over, and it makes it much easier for the defenders to def protect the castle. The thing is though, the modern bailey separates, divides the defensive value of uh, the castle. Far from having redundancies within a castle that you can protect against, because there are some castles in which the internal bailey is divided, and if one part of the bailey is captured, they haven't captured the whole thing, and there's a second section where the defenders can still defend by, okay? Now the difference between that concept and this is that if someone captures the bailey in a modern bailey, they are actually able to defend themselves as well against the people in the keep on the mot, as the defenders were able to protect themselves in the bailey itself. Now contrast that with a bailey that has internal divisions. If part of a bailey is captured, usually they don't have crenellations behind themselves to protect them against attacks from the other section of the bailey, and so they're still vulnerable, and it's very hard to use a section of a bailey as a staging platform to take the rest. But with the modern bailey, if you capture the bailey, you have a very, you know, sizable defensive, you know, thing now that you can use as a staging platform to take the keep big defensive problem. And the other problem is that the keep is very well defended, but the bailey isn't because the keep is up high on a mot, bailey's not so much. And the most defended and also uh, offensive building of a mot and bailey's design is actually the great tower, okay? The keep that's on the mot. And you've separated that from a sizable section of the castle. So you, it's very difficult to now employ the main offensive building in a protecting a large portion of the castle itself. So do you see the problem? And the other problem is that one of the most vulnerable parts of a Mott and Bailey is actually far less defended. It's important to protect the Lord, his home, the place where he lives, and so you will often find that being very fortified. But that's actually not the most important part to fortify on the castle. It's not the place where the Lord lives, it's the entrance, all right? And so Mott and Bailey's very rarely had proper gatehouses, which is a big problem, which made the, uh, the Bailey's far easier to be overrun and taken, and then use as a staging platform for the rest. So we are seeing some big holes in Mott and Bailey design right here. So one of the logical solutions to this, if you only have the resource to build one big protected defensive tower, is to take that tower, pick it up, and 
plunk it right on the gate of your castle. Make a big sizable gatehouse. And then if you have enough resources, you can again build another large tower for you to live in. But would you want to keep it separate? Because now you've just made the Bailey really fortified and protected. It's much harder for them to take because the entrance is nowhere near as vulnerable. And if they do manage to take the outer walls, even the gatehouse of this Bailey, wouldn't you want some type of fortified structure inside the Bailey itself that you can use to try and fight off the people who have taken the Bailey? Because by separating the second or, you know, the, uh, very fortified structure outside of the Bailey, the Bailey walls are there and you have the castle and they can use the Bailey against the main tower. But if you put that tower in the center of the Bailey, they take the Bailey and now they have no cover or anything against that primary tower, which is right in front of them. So moving that tower into the Bailey is a much better design strategy for defenses and overall castle design. And this is exactly what we see being done historically, where the large tower is moved either into the Bailey itself or connected with the walls, and we have a more classic castle design and layout. Layout, but then it kind of loses a significant feature because what about the mott? Okay, one of the key features of a mott and bailey is the mott and putting up a defensive tower on such a large raised earthwork is a very significant defensive element. So what they did or what they tried to do, they weren't able to do this in all cases, but one of the ways to fix this is to raise the entire castle on a higher elevation. Have the whole thing on a mott in that style, just a hill really, and then you're, you're done, you're fixed. And I mean, there are so many good classic examples of a castle just done this. And in addition to fortifying that main section of the hill at the top, they can add additional baileys and walling off the easiest kind of line of approach that you'll need to take to a get to the top of the hill itself. So the standard preference in castle design, instead of having a mott and bailey, was to combine it to have the bailey on the mott itself, a whole castle on the mott or hill. And like I said, this is what we would generally find as the preference, but not every castle was on the top of the hill because one of the other significant things you need to consider in positioning a castle is where it is tactically viable to do so. Say at the intersection of certain trade routes at the main thoroughfare or passageway between certain geographical conditions and stuff like that. So you might need a castle in a location that doesn't have good hilly terrain or something like that or a good position for it. You need to put it on a flat plain. And if that's the case, well, you could try and dig a mot, but generally they would just do a conventional castle design, but for those same weaknesses I pointed out. Separating one of the main defensive buildings from the rest of the castle is a problem. Put all your eggs in one basket with more traditional castle design like this. Put the main defensive tower inside the thing so you can use it to defend sections of the castle that might have been overrun. And if you can't put it on a hill, put a big old moat around it, whether dry or filled in with water, both those things work. And uh, it's far more defensive than what we had before. So these are the problems with Mott and Bailey design and why they kind of evolved to something that we see more classically. So there we go. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you again. So until that time, farewell.